Hey everybody, happy Friday. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back. If you're first time seeing this, uh, welcome to the channel. Um, I always do what I always do. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you're seeing this, it's probably because someone shared it with you and I'll get into why I believe that is uh, in a minute. And of, of course, some of you uh, who have subscribed and turned the notification bell on, hopefully you got notified. But with that said, Let's dive into today's conversation or monologue. I uh, hope to start a conversation in the, in the comments section, but here we go. I'm gonna quote someone, and I believe either one of Ayn Rand's characters said this or Ayn Rand herself said it, but I know I didn't come up with it. So I'm trying to give, uh, the creator of this quote, uh, their props. So here it goes. You can ignore reality, but you cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. And I'm going to tie that into Uncle Tom. Yeah. Uh, you know, Uncle Tom, of uh, Uncle Tom's cabin. Well, we live in a world where being called an Uncle Tom is an insult. But the reality is, Uncle Tom, let me, let me tell you who he was. He was a pious slave who, given the opportunity to run away, refused. Because, one, for one thing, he, didn't, he knew if he got sold, other slaves would be sold in his stead, and he didn't want that fate to happen to them. He didn't want mothers separated from children, fathers separated from children, even though he had children. Eventually he was sold off and separated from his children. And on the plantation he ended up on, the last plantation he ended up on, spoiler alert, uh, but this book has been out for, a hundred and some years, you, your fault if you haven't read. <laughs> okay, but anyway, again, he was given an opportunity. He was given an opportunity to have a better existence at, as a slave if he would take on the role as the human whipping machine, basically the overseer that inflicts punishment on other slaves. Tom, Uncle Tom refused to take on such a role to his detriment. Um, this refusal cost him his life. He knew that refusing such a request from his then master could lead to his death. With this knowledge at, in hand, he still refused to whip other slaves. How many of us would do that? I'm sorry, man, but I'll whip them. Give me the, give me the whip. I'll do it. Now, I'm just being silly here and sarcastic, if you want to call it that. But we live in a world where being called Uncle Tom is an insult. The reality is, although people have called me an Uncle Tom, I'm not worthy of the title. Are you? The consequences of ignoring the reality of who Uncle Tom was and what he represented is that anyone who questions or dare I say reject the narrative pushed by the left, the progressive left, the Democrats, the legacy media, Anyone who questions this narrative that everybody's a victim is afraid to be called an Uncle Tom. When reality, when in reality, sorry, we should be proud and deemed unworthy of the title of Uncle Tom. So chew on that over the weekend, but I got more. All right. So one of the subscribers to the channel 
uh, mentioned a very important topic that um, she thought I should talk on, and I will. Thanks for the suggestion. Um, I'm going to link it to the flaws in personality tribes, right? The media has been able to frame our political debates in terms of personalities, and this needs to change. Um, that's one reason why a lot of things need to be adjusted a little bit or changed. So uh, one thing I believe needs to change is the narrative concerning capitalists and capitalism. If you notice, hashtag broke capitalists. All capitalists, people who believe in the values of capitalism, don't have to be multi-millionaires, right? But anyway, we need to change this. And I'll show you evidence of why we need to get away from this personality tribe thing we got going on here, right? So, geez, technical difficulties. Okay, so the woman you love to hate. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, I'd probably get banned. Okay, the ALC wants to make a list of Trump supporters to hold them responsible. For what? All right, just the threat of this is disconcerting to a lot of people because I, I'm pretty confident that the vast majority of people who voted for Trump can find flaws in his personality, but under that, they really agree with his policies, right? But like I said in the last video, Please ask someone who voted for Biden to articulate why they voted for Biden without using the name Trump. Dare I say you will hear crickets. All right, so there's a problem with personality tribes because your opposition can easily say, hey, they like him. He is bad, therefore they are bad. So easy to do. Um, and, and we need to be a little bit more mature about our conversations concerning politics. Because like I've also said, if you have a right to vote, you have a responsibility to be informed. And if the media is all, all their information, if all the information you're getting from the media has a left-leaning tilt and a he, orange man bad tilt, then the information you're using to vote may be skewed. It may not represent reality, okay? There are some other consequences to this that directly affect content creators on YouTube. And this guy, Jeremy from The Quarterling, and if you've never seen him, it's probably because you don't like comic books. Shame on you. But with that said, uh, I believe he got into doing YouTube channels by reviewing comics and Marvel movies and stuff like that, pop culture or whatever. Um, and then, you know, over the course of time, he just started to notice, like I did, how all these social justice warrior issues started to creep into every aspect of entertainment. You know, you're reading this comic book and why is this in here, right? Why is Thor a woman? You know, why is James Bond 007? Why does she now have to be a black woman? which I will add an asterisk here. There's nothing wrong with that, except they already said she's bringing social justice warriors issues into James Bond. Like, come on, man, really? Can't we just watch James Bond, look at the Omega watch, order a martini and kick butt? Nope. Anyway, let me let you hear what Jeremy had to say. We're likely to share a high percentage of viewers and over the last i don't know say month or so um i've been wondering uh what exactly is going on with youtube growth uh my channel for example had been gaining nearly 1000 subscribers per day for three months or more uh, before completely crashing to earth in late october was it uh, ethan klein's hit piece video on me no i don't believe so I believe this is a widespread algorithmic change that is only going to get worse now that new things have been implemented that we don't know about, 
but YouTubers talk. Let me give an, give an example. All right, so you see on the bottom, on his, uh, the title there, channel, Shadow, Shadow Bands, right? So what's going on? Well, when you have this, you know, politics, the conversation or debate concerning politics, when it's basically that of which personality you like or don't like, it's easy for politicians, like I said, to say, hey, this guy is bad and the people who like him, therefore, are bad. And then you have big tech legacy media say, well, we don't like what they are saying because they are fans of this guy, you know, with this big personality. We shouldn't let other people hear them. And that appears to be what's happening, right? I, if you listen to me a couple of videos back, I said, wow, you know, I did this walk away video and I've been doing these videos for like seven months with a grand total of like 60 subscribers. Love you guys dearly. And then I did this walk away video and overnight, right? I went from seven months, 60 subscribers to in less than seven days, 650 new no no six a total of about 650 i mean i'm getting hundreds of views per hour all hours of the day every day for several days and then boom just like jeremy and accordingly said nothing i went from a hundreds of views per hour to on just that video to like five per hour strange so there's a need for us as a country to try and learn from President Trump, a big personality that was easily, I think, manipulated by those who don't like his ideas, right? Instead of talking about the ideas, you talk about the man. Lesson learned? Well, there is a lesson learned. And those who support the ideas that Trump actually represents and not the ideas that the media tells us he represents, I believe we have learned that idea, if you follow me. We have to push the ideas before the personality going forward. Uh, love them or hate them, I think if Democrats actually heard the ideas and the, the policies that Trump implemented, they wouldn't have a problem with the guy. So the competition of ideas is essential, not the competition of personalities. Because if, you, if it's the competition of ideas, the progressive left don't have a shot. The Democrats really look bad. I mean, present day and historically because going all the way back to 1832, I believe when they found, were founded up through slavery, through the Wilson administration, through Obama, through it, well, let's go back. Uh, <laughs> Lyndon Johnson, Obama, common thing, and it's not slavery. The common thing was socialism. I digress. So in my opinion, the Dems lose hands down on ideas. Um, and here's what they do to combat that. They tell us that all white people you don't know are racist. Let me show you how effective that is. Because you and I didn't know the founding fathers, right? They were long gone before we got here. But because they were white and you didn't know them, and they participated in an institution that is old as the written word that has effective that that has affected every race of people on the planet throughout the history of time slavery uh because because of that they must have been racist had to be racist i mean that's it, hands down that's that's it no need to debate it sorry you're wrong there is always a need so basically for people on the left to speak of the founding fathers ideas is fatal to them because 
America is not unique because a bunch of old white men got together and formed a more perfect union. America is unique because a bunch of old white men with certain novel ideas got together to form a more perfect union. Ideas such as all men are created equal, that we are born with certain inalienable rights, some of which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You know who didn't agree with that? A white guy named Lenin, another white guy named Stalin. And I ain't, I'm just gonna throw it out there. Eastern European white people didn't come up with these ideas. I'm sorry, but Finland, I don't think, hey man, I'm sorry, I ain't picking on you guys from Finland or Norway, but I don't remember them coming up with the Declaration of Independence, right? And the ideas that were in it, right? They did, no fault of their own, but they just didn't, right? The fact is, the founding fathers of this country agreed upon certain new ideas, right? And before people get out there and say, you know, well, before people say, you know, well, that didn't apply to black men. It didn't apply to the slaves. But if you go and read Dred Scott, the, the court case, Dred Scott, go look it up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just look it up. Go down to the last descending opinion where they present evidence that in five of the colonies that voted to ratify the Constitution, Blacks, free Blacks, voted to ratify the Constitution. And if you manage to do a little digging and come up and you find the original version of the De Declaration of Independence, it, Independence, it directly addresses this issue of all men are created e equal and slaves. So boom, um, go look that up. So these ideas that the founding fathers came up with, they're not a generic trait for white people. Like I said, Lenin ain't come up with these. Stalin ain't come up with these ideas and didn't believe in them, right? So, but what I can tell you is, me, an older black guy, who never owned any slaves, believe in the same ideas that these old white guys, some of which who did own slaves, believed in. Believe in, right? So it's about the ideas. Pay attention to the ideas, right? More so than the personalities. Um, so that the best ideas win and not the most kind, nice personality win. Right. So I'll leave that there. Uh, but I would like to make some reading suggestions. If you want to read something that will start you on a journey to not only question the common narrative of everybody's a victim and, you know, all white people you don't know are racist. You can start with Uncle Tom's Cabin. Hurry up and read it before they burn it. Right. <laughs> Can I get a round of applause for the man, the myth, the legend? Mr. Dr. Thomas Sowell, white, I mean, black, rednecks, and white liberals. Just the first 57 pages of this book will just have you questioning everything you've heard. If, you, if you're if you like 50 and under, you're going to be like, what the? Highly recommend it, and so does everybody else. So that, you know, has ever read a Thomas Sowell book. You want to get down to the nitty gritty of a lot of the issues that that still plague us today about slavery and the Civil War, why it was fought and all that stuff. First 31 pages of The Myth of the Lost Cause by Edward Bone Kemper III. Yeah, man, the truth is out there as uh, you know, the X-Files used to say. And I'm gonna do a shameless plug, cause why not? <laughs> uh, this little book behind me, Boom. Nyack. Ideas in Blood is a series, a fictional, uh, fictional series, historical fiction series that I, that I am producing, creating, writing, whatever. Um, and what I aspire to do is take a lot of historical facts that basically contradict, that are true, but basically contradict the narrative of 
that we've been hearing at least all my life with, you know, footnotes and stuff like that. But I, it's a narrative. It's, it's, it's entertaining. It's not a, you know, it's not Thomas Sowell's, you know, often dense, um, uh, you know, if you read Thomas Sowell, you know, it can be kind of dense. I'll just put it that way, but very informative, but kind of dense. Um, so that's a series I'm working on. The second book is I'm uh, working on it now. Uh, now, if you don't live in America, or if you live in America, let's say you live in eastern, the eastern part of California or in the plains, and you're not really familiar with urban America, and even if you are living in urban America, I suggest our two societies, which is not about black and white, right? But it's my memoir, and these are two awards that the book has received, um, is my memoir about growing up in Detroit, uh, starting off in the projects, going to a better neighborhood, and experiences there, uh, eventually going to live in Japan, experiencing Japan for, for years as a, black, as a Black American, and my perspectives on what I experienced, right? And it, I think this is very relevant to today. Very relevant to today. Um, you know, check out the reviews on it. Now, if you want to go a little broader and get a little philosoph philosophical, I always recommend um, The Fountainhead and, At and Atlas Shrug by Ayn Rand. If you are an individual, and you're like on your grind, you just, you, you got a goal you want to reach and you, you want that inspiration. You want that drive. Uh, I think Fountainhead, the, the hero there, Howard Rourke is very inspirational. Um, come to it with an open mind and let it do what it does as a, as a novel. And then Atlas Shrug. If you want an opportunity to see the world you're living in from a helicopter view, like if you want someone to take you out of the forest, pick you up, and let you see the the forest you're living in, Atlas Shrug is the book for you. So with that said, I hope you guys got something out of this. Please like, share, and subscribe. Oh, and find me on BitChute, Minds, and Parlor. Um, this weekend, I'm going to try my best to get a lot of my content switched over to these things because I don't know, man. I don't know if this is going to be a viable way to speak to you guys, but with that in the future. But with that said, I hope you have a great weekend. Enjoy yourself. Uh, read a little more. If you got any suggestions on good books, leave them in the comment section for other people to see. And I did create... Um, a Facebook group called The Broke Capitalist. Come and join us there. Maybe we can share information like books and uh, things that aren't in the normal conversation in, in terms of ideas such as individual liberty, individual responsibility, freedom, and politics and stuff like that. All right, y'all. So with that said, peace.